It is early morning in Oregon. The campus of Corbin University awakens. For more than 75 years, a strong tradition has existed here that integrates faith and learning. Students from around the world come to mature in their academic and spiritual lives through transformative learning. 8,700 miles to the west, it is the end of the day at the beautiful urban campus of Universitas Palita Harapan, just outside Jakarta, Indonesia. The university is a young community of 9,000 students who come to learn and advance their careers. These two communities share a common vision to educate Christian students who will make a difference in their families, communities, and nations for generations to come. In the United States, the dream began when two men founded a Bible Institute in 1935. Their purpose? To train Christian leaders in Phoenix, Arizona. The Institute's move to Oregon and subsequent growth into a university has produced nearly 10,000 alumni, 600 from the teacher education program. Across the Pacific, educator Johannes Ontoro and business magnate James Riotti laid plans to advance their Indonesian homeland through academically superior Christian education. Work began in 1992 with the establishment of a foundation to support a network of Christian schools throughout Indonesia. Located south of the Philippines and north of Australia, Indonesia claims some of the most densely populated real estate on earth. It is home to 240 million people with geographic diversity and rich tribal heritage scattered across 17,000 beautiful islands from Sumatra in the west to Papua in the east, a distance of more than 3,000 miles. The Yayasan, or foundation, was called Palita Harapan and designed with two divisions, a K-12 school system and feeder universities. Ontoro's dream was to see hundreds of economically tiered K-12 schools centered on a theme of the light and hope of the gospel of Christ. My name is Janelle Payton and I'm teaching in Indonesia at Sekolah Pelita Harapan. I teach grade 5 and I teach English, math, uh, UOI, which is an integrated curriculum of social studies and science, and then also Bible. When I came here, I started to understand the vision of the, the Yayas on the foundation and seeing that it's very strategic in that this culture, this country is built on certain principles and you cannot come in with a Western mindset and try to just change all of Indonesia. Indonesia is a country of extreme differences with a wide range of economic levels from very poor to the very rich. Rural and urban center people often lack the opportunity for adequate education and housing. The middle and upper classes have economic advantages that place them in extremely different social positions. To address these needs, the foundation created three tiers of schools to mirror the culture. They included the elite schools called Pilita, meaning bright light, the middle economic schools are called Dian, or medium light, and finally the lower income schools called Lintera, meaning lantern. And for someone like me coming in from a Western perspective, I cannot go to a Lintara school because I don't speak the language. I don't speak Bahasa. They, those schools are done only in Bahasa. And I can't go there because many of those places where they are are in the villages that are very close to foreigners. Even the Esteha schools, the Sokola Dian Harapan schools, are also um, mostly done in Bahasa. There's some English instruction as well, but they're also in more remote places. Some are in cities, smaller cities, but for the most part, it's national teachers who are there. And then, but it's the Espeja schools where people like me can come to who want to bring Jesus into Indonesia, who want to just be a light, to be spreading the gospel in my classroom. And this is a, a door that's open for foreigners, for people from Western mindset to come in. And so there's a very strategic plan that has been set up. But from a Western mindset, we think this doesn't make sense. But it really does when you understand the culture and you see that it's, it's not giving the rich more. It's giving all classes of people what they need. James and Eileen Riotti's resources, dedicated to developments that revolutionize Indonesian society, have launched the construction of hospitals, schools, and other business ventures. Much of their work became focused on Christian education as a result of their life-changing decision to follow Christ. Eileen Riotti explains. Uh, I was born in, uh, in a Buddhist family. Uh, I consider a family full of love. My parents loved me so much and taught me a lot of uh, good things. And uh, my parents taught me a lot about Confucius. 
So that's how I, I grew up. When I got married, the first eight years, our marriage was just falling apart because I brought my own tradition, he brought his own tradition, and there's no common denominator. So basically, we have our own idea. I have my own idea, he has his own idea. So, but at the eighth year of our marriage, God touched his life. And that's the start of the change of everything. The traditional approach for the Indonesian educational system uses rote memory as its primary learning tool. One of the team's goals was to change their schools to a more comprehensive, interactive teaching philosophy. In 1993, by Johannes uh, Untoro, who's the founder, felt that there's a great need in Indonesia to have a Christian school, not only Christian by name or giving just a Christianity as a subject, but truly integrate the faith in every subject. So that's how it started. It was a new concept. It was still under President Suharto, which at that time, not quite open to everything that's new. But by God's grace, somehow uh, the breakthrough happened and we're working together, hoping that we will raise a new generation for Indonesia, a generation that will come back to the country to look at the deficiency of the country and take it as an opportunity to be the agent of God's extension in redeeming Indonesia in all aspects. So that's our hope. <laughs> What began in 1993 as a dream of integrated faith and learning continues today through Corbin alumni who teach in Indonesia. There's non-believing students in my class every day, and so I have that opportunity to teach my subject from that biblical Christian worldview without having to disguise it or hide it and to be open. And then also, in between classes, the chance for that pastoral care to have students come in and ask me questions and to speak with them or to go on retreat and be in charge of a, a group of young boys that um, don't know Jesus. And so to be able to share with them is, is something that was originally what attracted, attracted me here and, and I haven't been disappointed. Um, I think with the basketball program that we started this year, um, it's been a really great opportunity for me to not only teach them the game of basketball, which obviously comes with coaching, um, but it's been really fun for me to have a group of young men and really just trying to shape and mold them more than just basketball players because we know, you know, at the end of the day, we care way more about, you know, where they are spiritually, where they are as men uh, than where they are on the basketball court, how their skills are developing. In order to support the need for well-educated Christian leaders, a new university was established. Universitas Palita Harapan, nicknamed UPH or UPHA, was founded in 1994. Since that time, the school has grown into an international university of students from the far reaches of Asia. The dean of the new teachers college at Upiha was Connie Rasselin, who had been part of the faculty at the first K through 12 school called Sekola Lippo. She came with an expressed goal of training university students who could as alumni feed the rapidly expanding network of Christian schools. I understand uh, what the burden was because it was very difficult for us to find teachers who are um, very committed with their Christian faith uh, but who is also um, trained uh, in terms of the teaching methodology and, and how to teach. And thus, uh, we see that there is no other way uh, but to grow our own. Uh, I remember uh, going back to Brian and Eileen and said, um, yes, I think I'm ready if the Lord has given this opportunity. Uh, for us to start this. We started the uh, new academic year of 2006-2007 with roughly 210 students and with only one time, a uh, one full-timer lecturer. Uh, the rest of us uh, did everything, <laughs> everything else here and there, uh, everything else in between. Uh, and so um, how we could manage, it's very easy for us to say it now, it's all God's grace. And it's not even just a slogan. It's really just His grace. Because if you look at what uh, we had at that time to start this um, impossible task, uh, we wouldn't have been where we are today. 
And so year after year, um, God continued to entrust uh, so many uh, students to us. Um, yes, we provide full scholarship. And the scholarship uh, is not just covering the tuition fee. It also includes uh, meals and accommodation. So literally, uh, these uh, students spend 24-7 with us. In the midst of excitement around student recruitment for the Upiha teacher training program, finding adequately trained Christian professors remained a problem. A professional development program was introduced with the help of Tabor College in Adelaide, Australia, but other problems remained, and by 2005, Administrator Brian Cox needed solutions. The schools had been established and were doing academically well, uh, but there wasn't a solid biblical Christian foundation to what was going on. And so our task was to help leaders and teachers and students to think about what that biblical Christian worldview was. We had to decide to work, though, with those teachers that we had. And so we developed professional development programs. While we were developing those programs, we thought those programs should contain an accreditation component. In other words, if we were expecting teachers to do professional development, we would expect to reward them with certification of some sort. We began to work through Tabor Adelaide, which uh, was a, a teacher training institute that had a biblical Christian worldview that I was familiar with coming from Adelaide myself. Uh, we began to uh, use their curriculum, invite some of their lecturers to do professional development with our teachers. Unfortunately, because of Australian regulations, those courses could not be adapted or altered in any way, otherwise their accreditation process would be endangered. Therefore, the organization began negotiations with Corbin University in the US, who were a lot more flexible in the way that they could deliver courses. Through the work of Corbin alumnus and residing Upiha president, Dr. Sheldon Nord, an invitation was made to Corbin University to restructure the Upiha Teachers College curriculum. It was a critical piece to put in place. Corbin Provost Matt Lucas and Dean of Education and Counseling Janine Allen were called upon to redevelop the program and seek avenues for accreditation. When Upiha first contacted us, we were excited. I was excited to do something new. The university was excited to work with another organization globally. The fact that our mission, which was to educate Christians to make a difference in the world for Jesus Christ, and their mission and vision, which was to change Indonesia for Christ through education, seemed to be a natural fit. But the most significant part of all of that was that our relationship was founded on biblical truth and a passion for Jesus Christ and what they were doing with their faith to transform Indonesia for Christ. So so about a year out before the first students were going to be graduating, we submitted our proposal to Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. So we waited. Three months went by, we hadn't heard anything. And after talking with them several times and clarifying um, further information when they would ask, I realized that um, we weren't going to get anywhere. And I went up to um, Seattle for our regular accreditation meeting. and figured, hey, this might be the opportunity to talk with somebody. So at lunchtime, I came into the room, and it was packed. I was late. I had been out talking with somebody else in the hallway and came in, and there, was, there weren't any seats left. And so I grabbed my meal and went to go sit down at the only available seat that I could find. And as I sat down, I turned to my left, and lo and behold, who was sitting there? It was President Sandra Elman of the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. And I realized this was a God-ordained moment. And so I turned to her and introduced myself. And uh, once she realized who I was, she started asking me some questions. And we spent about 35, 40 minutes talking about the partnership. And from there, things moved quickly. And once she understood and had answered her questions, um, we were able to get confirmation. And really about um, two months later, a month before graduation, we said, yes, they're good to go. We've had faculty from education go over and teach different professional development. We've had many, many students articulate interest in going to Indonesia. Last summer we had three students go over and teach in their Espeha summer school program and this summer we were invited and had three other students accepted to teach in their summer school program. So the partnership and the relationships continue to grow and thrive. We're celebrating 14 students, alumni teaching in Indonesia. When the long and complex process resulted in approval, some considered it to be a miracle beyond belief. The passion and emotion are evident as Connie recalls the works of Drs. Lucas and Allen at that critical time. And so, 
both of them. Um, I, I just couldn't thank God enough for them and the beautiful testimonies they, they shared. It just speaks volumes about uh, what it means to be true disciples of Jesus Christ. And so, um, if now I look back and think about uh, the so many years, that God has entrusted to us, um, I can truly say that He is really a faithful God. And uh, He sent the right people with the right heart um, and with the right burden for the uh, condition of this country. Uh, when we had so many graduates, uh, 240 over, and we thought in the beginning that, oh, we wouldn't have enough schools to place all these graduates, the Lord opened up so many doors. Our foundation was able to add over 20 new schools. And by the time Corbin and Upeha Teachers College graduates, these 240 something students, teachers, we didn't have enough because of the number of the locations uh, uh, that was there. And so, um, that is truly uh, a witness of, of, of God's amazing grace. What began as the plan of a few visionary men has now grown to over 30 schools that bring Christ's light and hope to thousands. They stand as a testament of God's grace to all. Corbin University will have close to, I believe, 550 if not almost 600 graduates all across Indonesia. If you start thinking about that, a small Christian university up in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, <laughs> probably hardly known in Indonesia, but when you committed to this calling and um, what God has entrusted you to, to do in your partnership with us. Wow, think about it. Five, over 550 of your graduates as well are now impacting lives for Jesus Christ. But goes beyond that. We want to introduce them to the truth. And that is really the burden that we have, to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ in a real tangible way so that when they see our teachers, they can feel the hands of Jesus and we can really bring the gospel to each of the families wherever our graduates are placed. The morning commissioning or commencement ceremonies are followed by an afternoon of songs and traditional island dances performed by the teacher education graduates. It is a fitting climax to many years of work and a time for joy and celebration before graduates leave for their teaching assignments throughout Indonesia. When they see our teachers, they can feel the hands of Jesus.